we are going to get started. So I'm happy to be here. Um, I'd like to introduce myself first. Um, I'm Lisa Loud and I've been in blockchain after a career in big tech. I moved into blockchain and since I started in uh, blockchain in 2017, I've worked as the CMO of BitMEX and the CEO of Shapeshift. And more recently, I've moved out of the trading sphere into NFTs. So I've been really excited to do some work with NFTs and some some big um, creative people. And then more recently, even than that, I've been very involved with DeFi, building tools for the DeFi space. So um, I'm here today. I'm delighted to be introducing Jean-Sébastien to you. Um, he is, uh, we had a chance to speak a few days ago and I was just blown away by the insights and the wisdom that Jean-Sébastien Sebastian Brain. So I'd like to give you a chance to introduce yourself. And um, before you, before I hand over the floor to you, though, for the audience, I'd just like to ask you to notice at the bottom of your screen, there's an emoji. You can click on that at any time to give a reaction to anything that Jean-Sebastien Jean presents. Um, if you would like to ask a question, feel free to click on the, the yellow talking head at the bottom of your screen. Even if we don't respond right away, there will be a time for questions and uh, we'll bring you up on stage to answer the questions when the right time comes. So with that, Jean-Sebastien, please introduce yourself and tell us what you're working on. Yes, sure, thank you. Um, so first of all, thank you for inviting me. And um, yeah, I think uh, before even presenting myself, I think it's very important to um, give you the context and the reason why I created La Collection. You will understand that this is completely aligned with my, let's say my background, but not my background only on the the professional aspect, but also on the personal aspect. This is this is an idea, and of course, I will detail what La Collection is. But this is an idea that came out to me, came to my mind, beginning of uh, Jan this year. Uh, we were I'm French, uh, and uh, we were in France in the middle of the third lockdown. Um, and for me, uh, the, these lockdowns were the uh, a perfect opportunity to step back a little bit and think a bit more of, of what I was really liking, what I was really missing. And I realized that what I was missing the most was to be able to visit museums or art galleries. This is a kind of a ritual I have. Um, I have, I have had for the past, let's say, 12, 15 years on a weekly basis or something or so. I'm, I really enjoy to go alone, you know, with music in my ears and uh, uh, visit the museum during lunchtime. This is my relax, my relax moment, my personal moment. And uh, of course, because of this lockdown, it was impossible and I was missing it so much. Um, and uh, I realized that, of course, I felt miserable because of this, but the situation that the cultural sector was facing was even worse. And I realized that by reading articles about the uh, Met or the Brooklyn museums, that are museums I know quite well, that were selling artworks not for renewing their collections, because this is something quite common, but this time they were selling artworks to uh, pay salaries and pay employees, and uh, even after very strong cost cutting plans. Um, Amazing. On the other hand, um, Jean Sebastien, do you have a, a camera that you could turn on so uh, while you're speaking? Yeah. The, the thing is, I, I'm wearing a mask right now, and uh, I'm in uh, the okay. Uber, so it's, <laughs> but I, I can if you want, okay. but it's not going to be very, very nice to see. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, sorry no for problem. that. Very, okay. uh, it yes. was not expected, but um, it's, yeah, it's how it is. It's a okay. bit uh, so, special. Sorry for interrupting. Please continue. No, no problem. Um, on the other hand, so uh, I was of course uh, all already quite involved in, let's say, or interested in different NFT projects with two things uh, in my mind. The first one is that uh, any NFT marketplaces, uh, they or let's say specialized in art, was lacking, uh, to me uh, at least, it was lacking curation. And this is something that was quite far from the traditional codes of the art space. Um, and uh, the other thing I realized is on top of these, let's say, marketplaces, 
uh, you had other business models that were emerging based on brand licensing. Uh, and this is the case, we, we have a famous company in France called Sorare, specialized in soccer. Uh, and they, they are leveraging brand licensing, but in the sport industry. And I knew that brand licensing was the key component of uh, the strategy to diversify financial resources for most of the cultural institutions. Uh, and uh, the, the good example is, for example, that the licensing agent of uh, Paris Saint-Germain is the same as uh, the Louvre. And that's why I was like, okay, maybe there is something to test, you know, how to leverage NFTs. I was fascinated by these, uh, let's say, technology and, the, and of course it was a booming sector. So how could we leverage brand licensing NFT in the cultural space? I, I then contacted uh, different institutions and uh, there is one um, I discussed with that just changed my life because I had in front of me someone telling me that he was thinking about moving to the NFT space for the past year. I was not expecting this. Uh, the, you know, the, the other institutions I talked to that were discovering NFTs, they never heard about NFT. It was, you know, before people, so it was really not that famous or known at least in Europe. Uh, but this European museum was really fascinated by NFTs as well. And this is the reason why, I, yeah, two days afterwards, I, two days later, I decided to create my entity, and uh, I found my co-founder. That is for your information in front of me, uh, and um, and yeah, I uh, you know I, I continue contacting many um, museums, art institutions, and this is with the British Museum that uh, let's say discussions accelerated, because we realized that there was this specific, very relevant exhibition, a physical one dedicated to Hokusai, uh, a famous artist that, for example, uh, uh, you know, printed the, the wave. I think that everyone knows the wave by Hokusai. And um, we think it was the perfect, sorry for the noise, very sorry for that. Uh, we think that we thought that the wave was the perfect icon to launch the, the, the platform the same day as the opening date of the, um, of the physical exhibition. And uh, the, the story behind it is just how to create a bridge between the physical space and the digital space. Because in the museum, you'll be able to, right now, I think the exhibition dedicated to Hokusai is, is, is live right now. So if you have the occasion to go to, uh, to London, uh, go there. It's a, it's, a very, it's a wonderful exhibition. And uh, what the, the British Museum did is uh, to install a pop-up store in the museum, explaining to the public what an NFT is, What's the uh, what's la, 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 what's the collaboration between uh, uh, La Collection and uh, and uh, the British Museum, and uh, so they're playing a role that I think nobody was expecting. Uh, they're educating the public. They want to enlarge the audience. The mission of a, of a, of a museum is to democratize culture, and they want to democratize culture with a through a very innovative way through NFTs. They want to target an audience that is much younger, more international, and then very strategic for them. And uh, the, the, the objective was to first to discover uh, the, some artworks from Hokusai in the museum. And uh, you can discover 100 artworks in the museum. And if you want to continue the experience, then first you're going to learn what an NFT is in the museum. And then if you go on lacollection.io, then you can discover the entire collection uh, of the British Museum of Hokusai. Uh, so it's a way to extend the experience started in the museum. So this is where we are and this is the story behind it. Um, now, um, yeah, so you move to the next page. So it's uh, to, you know, to build such platform. Uh, it was of course, no, no, you can go back this. No, back. Go back yeah, to thank the you. founders. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The founders. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and um, so, yeah, we what we wanted is making sure, you know, when you're working with the British Museum, you have absolutely uh, zero failure uh, obligation. And uh, to, to, to make sure that we were building something robust enough, uh, we um, there are three people that joined us as investors. Uh, the co-founders of Sorer, so the soccer NFT team that I mentioned, which is the second largest unicorn in France. Uh, and uh, we also have Ledger, maybe some of you know Ledger, 
um, uh, maybe most of you don't know that's a French company, uh, but this is a, the, the co-founder of Ledger is based in the SF and uh, is really helping us also to make sure that our platform is secure enough. Um, so uh, the so these are the um, let's say our investors and it's really helping us tremendously in order to to define the right talents and to build the right uh, platform. Now, what what is La Collection? Because it's good. I give you the intro, the context, but I think you're just wondering what the hell is La Collection. Uh, uh, so if you go to the next slide, so it's a very simple way of presenting it. Uh, La Collection is just you know leveraging collection of museums uh, and is uh, creating um, what we call the digital twin. So if you move again to the next slide, uh, it's it actually what we do is for each artwork of a museum partner, uh, we are creating an NFT with, um, we call it a digital lithography uh, because we, we are, uh, let's say, defining a number of editions of course and, uh, and then so it, it can be from one unique edition up to 10,000 editions and um, and we we associate the image with a certificate of authenticity signed by the museum uh, and by La Collection and then we are proposing to, to sell it on our platform and on top of the um, it's on top of the, uh, the, the NFT itself. Uh, we will provide more and more services coming from the museum itself. So I mentioned the, uh, for example, I mentioned the, uh, the, the dinner um, to, uh, with some of our key collectors. Uh, we are organizing, so it's not, it's not uh, let's say, official, but we, we should organize a dinner beginning of uh, 2022. Uh, and would like to create such events you know, to, you know, have again to continue this bridge between physical and digital space and making sure that people that are exchanging, interacting uh, on our platform are also able to meet physically in dedicated events in a very premium way. Um, and so the objective is to start with starting with the British Museum, but we, now, we are now in discussions with uh, many other museums. So. The idea will be also to create our own exhibition, you know, uh, that will be artworks coming from, um, let's say, the, our museum's partners. And, you know, sometimes, you know, that there are many loans uh, from uh, museums to another, to another, but be, it's sometimes it's very difficult uh, to, to assemble uh, artworks from different people. It's very Let's say it's very fragile, so it's difficult to, to transport it, to, to travel, to, to travel with it, to send it. And um, we do not have these, let's say, difficult situations in the digital uh, space. So we can think of very original, um, well curated exhibition. If you go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the parallel with digital lithography. And again, next slide. Yeah, so the, the, the first uh, partnership with the British Museum. So this is quite recent again. Huh? This is uh, the, this has been launched the 30th of September. Um, so this is the opening date of the uh, this physical exhibition again. Um, and um, yeah, what we what we did is you know if we created different levels of editions, it's making sure that we are targeting different uh, community members. Uh, we will target uh, people that are looking for scarcity, uh, people that want unique pieces or unique NFTs, very, let's say, the, uh, yeah, the, the more traditional collectors. But we also wanted to create larger editions in order to have a fixed price that is more affordable. So the starting price are around uh, $450, which is still expensive, but when you compare it with the average price in the NFT space, this is affordable. Um, and yes, we have 200 artworks and we the theme will uh, last uh, until end of Jan 2022. Uh, again, we are um, dropping new NFTs from the uh, British Museum's collection uh, during four months, which is the period of the uh, physical exhibition. So this is a perfect parallel between, again, physical and digital. If we move to the next one. Thanks. So what's interesting is you can imagine that 
it's taking time to convince museums. Uh, it's, uh, you know, these are institutions that are moving slowly to innovation. Um, even if, I mean, the British Museum was very, very reactive. Uh, you have to, when you're talking about NFTs, first you need to educate them, you need to explain what an NFT is, you need to reassure them around the, you know, the rights attached to it, um, around the, uh, you know, the how does it work, uh, what does it mean, what's, etc., etc. And uh, the, the, one of the main benefits is, of course, uh, the, uh, let's say it's to, to help them to have a, a new revenue stream um, because a commission will be paid to the museum on each sale, uh, not only on the primary market, but also on the secondary market. And the beauty of it is that it's, it's without any associated cost because we, you know, we're quite pragmatic. We're starting with uh, artworks that are already digitized. Um, so what we need from museums is only uh, a certificate signed uh, by them. And it's also uh, um, uh, the, the official image because you know, very often they have many different pictures, images, uh, photos of uh, one single artwork. So we'll just let them time to select the bright image that will be leveraged for uh, the NFT. So this is the first benefit. And if we move to the next slide, there is a second one that is, I think, even more, let's say, even bigger. Uh, it's around this community that I mentioned already. Um, when I'm talking to museums, very often what they tell me is that they have an issue with the public it's because it's mainly composed of, and I'm quoting, retired women. Uh, and it's, it's quite local. So uh, they, they really try to, um, let's say, uh, reach a new, uh, younger, uh, uh, let's say, population audience. Uh, we, we, we had a huge change of uh, presidents in the, in the Louvre recently. And when the new president joined the Louvre in uh, July this year, um, we, you can summarize her vision in two words. It's uh, uh, focusing on younger public and more international public. And this is very true for large institutions, but this is even more important for more regional ones. Because uh, more regional mu museums have treasures in their collections. Uh, but they, they only if they have access to a local population, sometimes regional or national, at least during summertime, but very often it's really not international. And um, this channel, uh, we really see NFT as a new marketing channel to engage with a new audience, much younger, much more international um, and quite wealthy. Uh, and uh, so these, this is for the, the museums, um, let's say a new generation of patrons. Uh, and so because it's new generation of patrons, they have to be treated as such. So that's why I mentioned the example of the dinner. Uh, and there are many ways to, let's say, uh, create benefits for these uh, new generation of collectors. Another benefit is on top of these communities, uh, it's, you know, very often, let's say, large museums are exhibiting between 5 to 15, 1, 5 uh, percent of their uh, collection. The rest is not exhibited, so, uh, or is exhibited once every 10 years. So this is also a way, you know, as again, the, the mission of a, a, of a museum, if it's to democratize culture and to promote culture, then it's too bad to see that 80% of their collection is just not exhibited. So this is a way to promote even non-exhibited artworks. And then in terms of experience on site, uh, or again, with this you know, display or this link between the bridge between physical and digital, you can very often, the, the experience on site is not that perfect because you can have uh, content um, you have uh, uh, content that is written in rooms uh, in, um, in a museum uh, and everyone is trying to read in the same, you know, and is queuing or is, uh, is assembling in the same space. So in terms of uh, uh, experience, it's not perfect. Uh, we should personalize this and uh, it, there are better ways than just uh, audio guide. Uh, you can just, you know, uh, prepare some QR codes 
And we think that uh, if we agree on the content associated to each artwork, then you can personalize the experience for the, 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 the public. And we think also that on the longer term, in a couple of uh, months or years, people would be interested in knowing just the, the price as an NFT. And uh, we, I think that everyone who went to museums one day uh, wanted to, you know, or thought of, I would love to, to own this artwork, this painting. And I, I can imagine this painting in my apartment, in my house, and I would just love to have it happen because <laughs> the museum will never sell it or it's quite rare. Um, so this is, you know, this is a way to own something that is not accessible anyway and that has much more value than just a poster so uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's a new way to to it's a new link with the original work and uh, i think this is pretty it's amazing yeah so let's um invite questions if the audience if you have any questions please feel free to um uh, to click on the, the yellow head at the bottom and I'm going to invite Nina to come onto stage to um, to ask her question. Please go ahead. So hello, I have a question. Um, my question is uh, how museums and NFTs find common ground? Uh, will we see NFTs in the lure? Or what do you think? About. Hello, I think I lost you. Yeah, so the you, question. Uh, sorry. We, we have a question. Um, do you, do you, how, how do you see, why don't you repeat your question, Nina, in your own Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry because I think I, I lost you. I hope the connection was good enough. I hope you heard yeah, me. Yeah, it well. was good up until you left. Okay, okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, it's yeah, perfect. Sorry again. Okay, how museums and uh, NFTs find common ground? Uh, will we see NFTs in the lower? And uh, what do you think about it? Um, what do you mean by common ground? Mm, like uh, something like... Uh, Reciprocal? We'll, we'll, uh, so I think she's asking, we're, we're showing museum works in NFT galleries yeah. where we also see the reverse. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a very, very interesting question. So the, this is the second step for uh, La Collection. And we, this is something we, we clearly have in mind. You know that most of the museums today are applying a model that we, we think are, is uh, just fascinating. There is very often a room dedicated to a contemporary artist uh, that's based on um, you know, uh, uh, an artwork from the museum's collection is revisiting this artwork and is uh, composing new paintings uh, that are very contemporary. Uh, in the same room, is explaining, you know, what's the, how he has been or she has been uh, influenced by this artist, and what's the, uh, let's say, artistic uh, reflection or, or thoughts behind this project. I really like this kind of very modern eye um, to a very classical or legendary masterpiece. Uh, this and this is something that uh, museums really like. So I, I'm, I mean, first of all, we'd like to apply this model, and we would like to on our platform to combine uh, uh, contemporary artists, whether they are digital artists or just contemporary artists, revisiting so, some fascinating uh, artworks such as the Wave or whatever. I mean, uh, any any artwork, any artwork from the British Museum. So this could be the first step to you know kind of integrate uh, digital art uh, 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 is the first step to integrate digital art in museums. So that's, so that's a step. And I'm, I'm really confident because there is one initiative coming from the ICA Miami, uh, where actually a patron just donated a crypto bank. And so the, the ICA Miami Museum is now the first museum owning uh, um, an NFT in its collection. That's the first wow. one. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, the impact that this had on the public was fascinating. It's, mm -hmm. uh, they realized, I mean, the, the, the day after and the weeks after, they realized that uh, a, a new public was coming because they were quite, uh, quite intrigued. I mean, they were, you know, mm -hmm. they wanted to see it for real. So first of all, the, the key question here is how to project it. 
So they decided to print it and to so had to have a, a crypto bank printed in the in the museum. I hope that the second step will be to have dedicated screens uh, in order to project not only one artwork but many artworks. But I'm I'm quite sure that most of the it's you know the, most of the uh, when I think of uh, X copy for example, I think that X copy will have its place in museums in the future. Uh, and there is no doubt. There is no doubt. Mm -hmm. So uh, great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. We have time for a couple more questions, um, if we're quick. So Sean, I've just um, promoted you to the stage. What is your question, please? Yeah, I'm now regretting coming up, but I have to be quick because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, my question, uh, I don't know um, if, if you can answer it quickly. Uh, I, I do see a lot of uh, uh, capabilities within NFT to make a lot of uh, illiquid uh, assets liquid, as they say. But when we talk about museums and things like that, I mean, I always think like, what about the copyright issues? What about, uh, you know, the licenses that probably will be required. Do you see some kind of a legal concerns that NFT presents? So, of course, this is a question that we had to tackle. I mean, and I can I can tell you that without being sure that it was possible, uh, uh, an institution like the British Museum would never have come to the to the space. Um, what I'm saying, I mean, to, 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 to do it quickly, what I'm saying is that, you know, when you go to a museum today, when you're visiting an exhibition, in the end of this exhibition, you have the possibility to buy posters, to buy t-shirts, to buy puzzles. All these suppliers are working with the museum through a brand licensing contract. We are leveraging the exact same principle. The exact same principle, meaning that it's just brand licensing. And the only difference is that we're talking about a digital good and not a physical good. But in the end of the day, there is no difference. And you know, the risk of, you know, using the image. So of the, first of all, the, 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 the image you're buying, the, the NFT you're buying, you have a private usage attached to it, meaning that if you want to print it, of course you can, but you do not have any commercial usage attached to it. So you cannot create mugs leveraging the image, okay? That being said, the risk associated to, to such risk it's not bigger than just having someone taking a picture. Uh, now that we all have the, these uh, iPhone with us, you can have a very uh, good picture of an artwork and you can use it uh, for commercial usage. So that we don't see this as a huge risk. And this is really not the kind of things that NFT community is doing. I think the, the NFT philosophy is really to be much more fair with artists making sure that they will have a commission, the primary and secondary market is not. To... Um, and so far we, we had absolutely no issue. So I, I know that we're at the end of our time, Thanks. but I would, yeah, thank you for that great question. Um, we may be able to do one more question, but before we do that, I wanted to let the audience know if you have to go, we're at the end of our session and um, we will have a two hour coffee break now. We invite you to rejoin us, please, at 4 p.m. We'll have another session with NFT artist Lance King and CEO of Sandbox Sebastien Bourget, Bourget um, at 4.30 p.m. Um, in the meantime, the gallery will still be open. Jean-Sébastien, thank you so much. If you have time for another question, I don't know if you have to go, but perhaps we could take one more question sure. from the audience. Sure. If someone has a question. I'm not surprised Sebastian's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me ask you a question if there's not one from the audience. I just was wondering, um, who is your community? Um, who yep. are the people that you hope to reach? Um, yeah, I love this question. So we have um, the three community members, I would say, three typology of community members. We, we have, of course, existing NFT collectors. Uh, then we have more, let's say, art amateurs. So people that are going to museums, I would consider myself as an art amateur. And then you have more traditional art collectors, people that are already owning paintings uh, and, pay and buying uh, paintings in, uh, in art galleries. These three community members have very different needs. 
um, and so uh, it's interesting because we have very different strategy in order to to cope with the needs. Um, you know, NFT collectors are here, some of them to speculate or then they own a piece to communicate on Twitter and to be quite proud of uh, what they just uh, owned. Uh, while the art collector are here to really discover the artist and uh, take the time to also do the content that we're producing, whether it's articles or videos, etc. Traditional art collectors are really looking for the kind of event that they should targeting they are I reaching agree. only yeah. regional local public and not uh, sometimes national but not international so no of course not and especially because these smaller institutions still have treasures in their collections uh, it's not because it's small that they don't have something wonderful to, to promote um, so no of course not we really want to, to to promote any institutions that have let's say nice collections but it's like with the chap that was talking uh, in the previous room that Lisa was moderating, uh, Vladimir. You know, I mean, um, my mom always said, never have said uh, a guy whose name is Vladimir. You know, so <laughs> I didn't want to ask him uh, that question. So, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, I feel with the blockchain games, uh, uh, you know, they've got a huge barrier to entry. You've got, uh, you know, big gaming companies, publishing studios that don't want some indie, you know, developers coming and, you know, playing on the, on the ground. And they've got huge budgets and uh, trust that they've built over decades. Uh, so I think blockchain game, gamers will have a, you know, a big uh, mountain to climb. And I think with museums is exactly the same. You know, if you're a big museum that the ones that you've been, you know, using as an example, very well known, uh, yes, there, there would be certainly evaluating the, um, the, the, the benefits of NFTs, but I, I would assume it's a smaller museums, you know, more niche ones that would benefit the most from it. Would you agree or? Oh, I, I think both, you know, will, uh, will, uh, it will be, they, they will benefit both of them. That, that, that's, it's just that I think the, the impact on the uh, traffic, on the influence, uh, the applicants on, uh, on their public will be, might be bigger for the bigger ones. Because when, let's imagine you go to France. If you go to France, you'll go to Paris, probably. But we, we have in France, in very small cities, wonderful institutions. So if you discover these institutions through, uh, thanks to NFTs, you may change your, uh, your travel and try to visit this specific uh, a museum, but it's going to be harder than uh, it's going to be harder than just you know going to the Louvre uh, in Paris because you knew that you would stop there. 
So I, I think it's more, I mean, th there are different benefits, uh, really different benefits. I, I think the impact will be stronger for smaller institutions, but in the end of the day, it only depends on the quality of their collection. Again, if, if you are a small institution and you have a Van Gogh, then you can be sure that uh, uh, we will be promoting your Van Gogh as no other let's say, masterpiece, and uh, then it could contribute to your brand awareness very strongly. Um, okay. So, you know, having icons in, the, in this small museum collection is the key, rather than the name or the location. Oh, thanks for that. All right. Thank you. I think we're going to wrap it up. It sounds like you're on the move, Dr. Sebastian. So thank you so much for staying a little bit late to answer some of the questions. Great question, Sean. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate everybody for coming and listening and staying over time. Amazing session. Thank you so much. And please rejoin us at, the, at 4 p.m. Um, and in the meantime, please visit the gallery. Enjoy the rest of the conference, everybody. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you can very much. We, can we meet in the gallery then, uh, as a, as a I'm I'm gonna have dinner right now. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, <laughs> then, all right, then. Uh, uh, But you can, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to me if you want. No, no worries. If you want to continue this conversation, reach out to me. I think there is some links, uh, la collection.io or um, Twitter. So you you will it will be, you will, I mean you, you will find me easily. Thank you. Great. All right. Bon thank appetit. you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. Bon Thank you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.